Hello, everyone. I'm Jerry Savelle. Thank you for watching our broadcast today. We appreciate you taking time out of your busy lives to tune in. And I believe, praise God, you're going to be glad that you watched the broadcast today. You're going to learn some things about keys to a flourishing lifestyle. Back in November of 2016, the Spirit of the Lord said to me in a prophetic word that beginning in 2017, the faithful shall flourish and it will be like days of heaven on earth. I have with me today, once again, Pastor Justin Bridges, uh, pastor of the Heritage of Faith Christian Center, an outreach of Jerry Savelle Ministries here in Crowley, Texas. And by the way, if you're ever in our area, come and join us. Even if I'm not there, which I'm not there very often <laughs> uh, because I'm preaching somewhere around the world, but Justin's there just about every Sunday. And I'll tell you, you'll not be disappointed when you come and hear Justin. Justin, thank you for joining me again this week. Honored to be here, Dr. Savelle. Thank you. And we're talking about, uh, continuing to talk about, yeah. Uh, keys to a flourishing lifestyle. Right. And I want to talk about uh, flourishing spiritually, first of all, today. Mm -hmm. So I want to read to you from Psalm 92 and verse 12. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat or prosperous and flourishing. So verses 12, 13, and 14 mention the term flourishing. Uh, God's plan is that the righteous shall flourish. Now, righteous people simply means those that have right standing with God. And that's not something you can do. That's not something you can earn. Jesus got it for you. When he went to Calvary, gave his life, shed his blood, the Bible says, he who knew no sin was made to be sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God. So I'm already righteous. Amen. Me you're too. already righteous, Me praise too. God. And if you've made Jesus the Lord of your life, you're already righteous. Now God's plan is that you will flourish. Now um, the Amplified Bible says the uncompromisingly righteous. And in other places it says the consistently righteous. Those are all terms related to faithfulness. So the faithful shall flourish and it'll be like days of heaven on earth. In other words, it's just going to get so good. You're going to think you're already in right. heaven. Praise right. God. So it begins with flourishing spiritually. Yeah. Now, let me read to you from second Corinthians chapter five and verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That is the, the starting point for flourishing. You make Jesus the Lord of your life. Your spirit is recreated, recreated in the image of Christ. And that begins your uh, pursuit of flourishing. You must be born again. And then it says, all things become new. Now, life is going to become new to you. My life has never been the same since the day I made Jesus the Lord of my life. And then it says in Galatians chapter three, verses 13 and 14, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. Now you'll find the blessing of Abraham recorded in Deuteronomy chapter 28. And it covers that man's life, spirit, soul, body, and financially. So God wants us to flourish in every area of our life. Amen. But it all begins with flourishing spiritually. Yeah. And that takes place the moment you are born again. Yeah. Now, let me read this, and then I'm going to ask Justin to make some comments on it. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 3. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Now, flourishing means to thrive. It means to grow. It means to become strong. It means to make steady progress. So right here, Peter is saying that when you're born again, the first thing you need to do is get in the word yeah. that you may grow That's thereby. It. Yeah, you got to get in the word. You know, for me in 1993, when I had that experience, you know, I, I, was, I was a new <coughs> creation. But I had to, I, I had to now renew my mind. Yes. You know, I couldn't, now that I'm born again, I couldn't remain the way because my entire life up to that time had been totally led by my mind, my will, and my emotions. So all of a sudden, now I have to live in a different order. 
now I have to live out of this reborn nature. Now I have to re live out of this reborn spirit. But, so how am I going to do that? It's going to come down to the Word of God. Yeah. You know, in Ephesians 4, it talks about the gifts that were sent into the body that we might grow up into all things into Him who is Christ. Yeah, let me re uh, interrupt you a moment there. The Amplified Bible says in Ephesians 4, 18, let us grow up in every way yeah. and in all things. Yeah. So God wants us to flourish not only spiritually, get stronger spiritually, mm -hmm. get stronger in our faith, yeah. get stronger in our walk with Him, stronger in our confidence yeah. in His ability to see us through. But He wants us to flourish spiritually, mentally, physically, and financially. That is flourishing in all, every way, and in all things. Yeah. But there's no flourishing outside of the Word of God. Impossible. Impossible. Yeah, because the Word is what gives us His will. The Word is what gives us His desire. The Word is what tells us how we should be living. Yeah. Jesus was the Word, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So the Word is what we need to live by. You know, so we need to fix our mind, fix our attention on the Word. Yeah. How do we fix our attention to know God's will? Is by fixing our eyes on His Word. You know, the first scripture that I read, uh, I received the Lord February the 11th, 1969. February the 12th, uh, I started studying the Word. Mm -hmm. And the first scripture that I ever read was John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. Mm -hmm. It says, If you continue in my Word, yeah. then you are my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And that little word, continue, yeah. it got as big as my Bible, it jumped off the pages and into my heart. Right. And, and the Lord said, that's the key to your success. He said, you've been a good starter all of your life, but you've never continued anything. Right. And he said, if you're ever going to be the man I want you to be, the husband I want you to be, the father I want you to be, the minister I want you to be, then you're going to have to develop the art of continuing. Mm -hmm. Continue in my word. That That's not a one-time event. Mm -hmm. That's not study it Sunday morning before you go to church. That's not, uh, you know, just reading uh, a couple of scriptures every night before you go to bed. Mm -hmm. That is a process that you, that God expects you to do for the rest of your life. Right. He says, if you will continue in my word, then you will know the truth. That's it. Now, I looked up the definition for the word truth, and it says the highest form of reality that exists. Yeah. So you will know the truth. The truth is the highest form of reality that exists. That means it's higher than what the world considers to be the truth. Right. You know, the world says everybody's got to be sick sometimes. Right. There's a higher truth. Yeah. The world says everybody's got to go broke sometimes. Mm -hmm. There's a higher truth. My God shall supply all my needs mm -hmm. according to His riches and glory. So if you continue in the Word, you're going to know the truth, and the truth will make you free, praise God. But... Once again, that's a daily process. It's not starting it. It's not, uh, uh, you know, getting discouraged. It's not, if it doesn't seem to be producing any results, quit. Continue means continue. Right. You know, and with that, but fixing our attention on the Word, I'm just reminded of Romans chapter 12, when it says for us not to be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Yeah. So I've always looked at it this way. I'm either going to be conformed to the world, or I'm going to be transformed by the Word. It's either or. And, and constantly, every day of our lives, we're being conformed to something. The question is, I'm going to be conformed to whatever I'm focusing on. I'm going to be conformed to whatever I'm giving attention to. So if I'm giving attention to God's Word, if I'm giving attention to His presence, I'm giving attention to Jesus and His path for my life, then I'm going to be transformed to that. But if I'm giving my attention to the world's reports, yeah. I'm giving attention to everything else around me and my environment, yeah. then I'm going to become like it. I'm going to fit into its mold. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, and I believe it's a Phillips translation that says, don't uh, allow the world around you to squeeze you <laughs> into its mold. Right. They so it will, it'll try. And, you know, uh, when you first start out, uh, consequently, that's all you know yeah. is the world's way, yeah. the world's method, the carnal knowledge. Yeah. That's all you know. And... Uh, so when you get into the Word of God, you're going you're gonna to start reading things that are go contrary to the way you were brought up, contrary to the way you were taught. You know, I remember the first time I heard Kenneth Copeland back in 1969, and uh, his message has changed my life. 
But I remember the statement that he made quite often in his services. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm not moved by what I hear. I'm only moved by what I believe, yeah. and I believe the Word of God. That's it. And I'm sitting there thinking, boy, I am. I'm moved <laughs> by what I see. I'm moved by what I feel. I'm, I'm moved by what I hear. But see, that's the way I was brought up. That's the way we were trained yeah. from, from infancy right. to, to be moved by what we see, what we hear, what we feel. But the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. Right. In other words, what you can see is not permanent. Right. The Bible says it's temporary. But what the Word says is eternal. Yeah. The Bible says the grass withers, the flower fades, but the Word of our God shall stand forever. Right. So if I'm, if I'm choosing to believe the Word of God more than what I can see, more than what I can feel, and more than what I can hear, mm -hmm. if I will stick to the Word, hold fast That's to the right. Word, eventually what I see, what I feel, and what I hear will change and line up with the Word of God. Right. Amen. Yeah, this Word has power. Yeah. The Word, it says it's sharper than any two-edged sword. This Word, it, in, in Ecclesiastes, it says where the Word of a king is, there's power. There's power in this Word. It's not just some religious book. It's not an outdated book. No, this Word is for right now. Yes. And a lot of people think this Word is just some religious book. No, it's something that will change your life today. It's living. It's alive. Yeah. And in James chapter 1, this, this, this went off on me, you know, a, a few years back. And, and just when I was praying over our children and, and standing for some things. And, and it says this in verse 9, it says, understand this my beloved brethren, let every man be quick to hear, a ready listener, slow to speak, slow to take offense, and quick to get angry. For man's anger does not promote the righteousness of God. What does that mean? It means man's ways does not get God's results. Mm -hmm. And it's just like we're talking about renewing our mind. We're not yeah. to be conformed to the world because man's ways will not get God's results. So if you continue down the path that you've always been going or continuing down the path that the rest of the world's going, you're going to continue to get the same results. So there has to be something different. If we keep reading, it talks about putting away certain things. Putting away, really, we can say there's some, there's some big words here like filthiness or superfluity or naughtiness. <laughs> and, and, and it says, but receive with meekness the engrafted word. Yeah. So put away man's way of doing things and receive with meekness. What does that mean? It means to welcome it into the heart. Yeah. Welcome the Word into a heart because then it says it has the ability. You see, Word has ability. This Word that you, that you have, it has ability. And it says this engrafted Word, what does that mean? When it becomes a part of you. Mm -hmm. When this Word becomes engrafted into your heart, it has the ability to save your soul. What does that mean? It has the power to make you whole. Spirit, soul, body, financially, everything that you need is found in this Word. That's right. That's right. It is the source of everything that we need in this life, spiritually, physically, mentally and financially. God has promised that He will supply every need that you have. Now, where did I get that? I found it in a word. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that, that uh, uh, the Lord is our shepherd and we shall not want. Where did I find that? I found it in the mm -hmm. word. So I don't, I don't live in doubt. I don't live in wonderment. I know because the word promises me that my God shall supply my every need. I believe that, praise God. Not only that, I've been living on that promise for 48 years and God has never let me down. God has never Amen. failed me. He is a faithful God. He will continue to supply my need no matter what's happening around Amen. me, no matter what's happening in the world. Amen. God has promised that He will supply my need and His Word will not return void. So you, you've got to get in the Word, folks. Yeah. There's just absolutely no way that you will ever flourish in the things of God if you don't continue in the Word of the Lord. Now, I, I wrote this down in my notes that the mission of Satan is to do these four things where the Word of God is concerned. Number one, to weaken the authority of the Word. Number two, to distort the true teachings of the Word. And then number three, to add man, man's ideas, thoughts, and vain philosophies to the Word. And then number four, if possible, put the Word entirely aside. He does not want you getting in the Word of God. You know, he don't mind you going to church just as long as you go to a church where the Word's not preached. 
In fact, he's the most faithful church member there. <laughs> he don't care if you go to church, just as long as you don't go to a church that preaches the word. He don't care if you own a Bible. He don't care if you own <laughs> one that, that that's, uh, you have one in every room in your house, just as long as you never get in it. And if you do get in it, then he hopes that he has the ability or you give him the ability to weaken the authority of it, to distort the true meanings of it, to add man's ideas to it, or to put the power of it entirely aside. So you, you've got to make a determination that once you get in the Word of God, that you are there to stay. You know, in those early days, Justin, uh, not knowing anything about the Word, it was not easy. I mean, you know, uh, Carolyn had been filled with the Holy Ghost since she was eight years old. She went to church where, you know, they, they, they were a full gospel church. Uh, she's been speaking in tongues, been filled with the Holy Ghost since she's eight. And she knew a whole lot more word than I did. And so when I first came into this, I thought, well, I guess it's like any other book. You just start on page one, you know, <laughs> and man, I got so bogged down in that. I, I got so aggravated. I, I, I walked out of that bedroom and I said, Carol, I can't understand this. She said, where are you reading? I said, page one. Isn't that where you start? She said, no. Uh, go start in the ministry of Jesus. Go start in Matthew. And I got over in Matthew and I got lost in it as well. Then she said, well, then go read the epistles. I said, what are epistles? <laughs> and and uh, she said, it's the writings of, of the apostles. And so I started there. I didn't understand anything. And so finally I said, Lord, you got to help me. Uh, how am I ever going to understand this? And so he said, just close your eyes and pray in the spirit. And I promise that the Holy Spirit will lead and guide you into all truth. So you ask the Holy Spirit yeah. to do his part, lead and guide you into the truth. And so I just closed my eyes and I prayed in the spirit and I said, Holy Spirit, you're my teacher. You're my guide. You're, you're the revealer of truth. So you reveal this to me. And so I just prayed in the spirit for quite some time and then when I opened my Bible the next time, all of a sudden, I saw things I'd never seen before. Yeah. It was becoming revelation. That's so good. All of a sudden, it was not just words in a book. It was life. Yeah. It was changing my thought patterns. It was changing my mm -hmm. opinions. It was changing my philosophies. It was changing my outlook on life. Yeah. Uh, it was building hope. So I thought, dear Lord, if I continue in this, what will it do for me? Yeah. This is just day one, right. you know, and I, I made a decision that whatever it takes, I'm going to continue in the word. Yeah. I'm not going to be talked out of it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get discouraged. Yeah. I had to fight that off, yeah. you know. Uh, I mean, it's not just like Zhao we, you know, <laughs> uh, my life was totally changed in one day. No, I had to fight off discouragement. I had to fight off, uh, you know, wanting to give up. But praise God, when I stood on the word of God and resisted the devil, then the Bible promised that he would flee and praise God he did. And I began to learn the word of God and thank God. Oh, I, sh I will forever be grateful for what the word of God has done in my life. But you've got to make the decision. Those of you that are watching today, if you haven't made the quality decision that you're going to spend quality time in the word and you've made up your mind that you're not going to be talked out of it, then praise God, I'm telling you, your life is about to change. It is going to change so drastically that people won't even think you're the same person. Right. And the reality is you won't be the same person. Exactly. So get in the Word, stay in the Word, and that is going to lead to a flourishing lifestyle. I want you to watch now as our announcement shares with you uh, some special uh, products that we have available for you this week. And then just now, I'll be back in just a few moments. The faithful shall flourish, and it will be like days of heaven on earth. The Lord gave a prophetic word saying that days like heaven on earth were available to the faithful. But what does it mean to be faithful? In the powerful six CD series, Keys to a Flourishing Lifestyle, Jerry Savelle teaches on faithfulness for flourishing in every area of your life. As you listen to this faith-filled study, you will learn the differences between being righteous and being faithful, how to flourish spirit, soul, and body, being persistent in your faith for flourishing, expecting and calling in your harvest, and flourishing to be a blessing. 
God's plan for you is exceedingly far better than anything the world could ever offer. Are you ready to learn how to flourish and see those days of heaven on earth? Call or go online to jerrysavelle.org and request the six CD series, Keys to a Flourishing Lifestyle. Don't wait any longer. You can learn the keys to live in the blessing God has for you today. I'm Ryan. And I'm Tanya. And we're the Flowers. And this is our partner story. In 2009, we moved from Redmond, Oregon to Fort Worth, Texas to start our family. We quickly became pregnant and we're very excited to have our first child. Unfortunately, we did lose that baby, but we had great support from our pastors at Heritage of Faith Christian Center. Right, and then while in service, one time when Dr. Seville was speaking at Heritage of Faith, um, he talked about sowing a significant seed. And so we sowed this uh, great piece of baby furniture that was, that was gonna be perfect, but we knew in our hearts that we needed to sow um, into another couple that was expecting a baby. We got pregnant again, and we had a beautifully healthy, perfect pregnancy. We welcomed Lucas into our family. About four years later, we began to start believing for, for more children, and we had four consecutive miscarriages within one year. Uh, we went to the doctors trying to find out exactly what was wrong in the natural so that we could, like Dr. Seville says in his book, Prayer Petition, it would give our faith a target so we could physically speak to the hormone levels and all the changes that had to happen in your body. There were a lot of times where it felt just impossible. We felt like giving up. But then at church, I found Dr. Seville's book called The Battle Destined to Win. And that book inspired and encouraged me so much just to just to keep standing, to just just keep plugging away. Um, and I think he says in there, when you get to the end of your rope, tie a knot and hold on. And that's kind of what we did. We got pregnant a fifth time. And when we went to the doctor, we found out we were having twins. We were really taken back and overwhelmed by God's goodness, and He really surprised us with two little ones. When I first saw that it was twins, and through this twins pregnancy, I wasn't feeling physically, you know, what Tanya was going through. So the devil tried to come at me with fear thoughts of, oh, now it's twins, you were planning for one baby, now you're gonna have two. How are you gonna be able to support this family that's gonna now like triple in size. How are we gonna afford all this different stuff? So we continued to stand for God's provision. So much so that by the time the babies actually came, we'd been blessed above and beyond so that we had diapers and wipes to last two babies for a whole year. We were excited to welcome Wyatt and Timothy into our family. They were perfectly healthy, had a perfect delivery. Because of the faithful partners at Jerry Seville Ministries, we were able to use these resources to build our faith and believe God for our family. I love these testimonies. Keep sending them to us and sharing them with us because once again, when we read them and share them with our viewing audience, it's encouraging to them. You never know what your testimony can do to help another person get out of their dilemma and have the breakthrough that they're believing God for. In fact, I've got some other testimonies here I want to share with you real quick. Here's one from Mark. I had an accident a couple of days ago, and to our surprise, there was no damage to either vehicle. I told the other guy that I'm a believer and began praising God for his protection. Terry writes and says, you prayed for me at the Believers Convention, and I received my healing. Amen. To this day, I, am, uh, I have no pain, and the bone spur uh, has been healed, and gave, God gave me new cartilage. Uh, here's one from Pacer and Laura. We had believed for a child for seven years, and praise God, we have a beautiful, healthy baby girl. Along with that, Amen. our move from Colorado to Wyoming went smoothly. Thank you, Lord. One from Lonnie. I called in and left a prayer request on Friday for a job, and I started work the following Monday. Amen. Thank you for your prayers. And thank you for your ministry. Amen. Thank you, Lonnie, for writing to us and sharing that testimony with us. And here's some other partners that have written in with prayer requests, and I want to read them and have Justin to pray over them. And if you're watching today, I want you to join your faith with us and believe God in the name of Jesus that God will hear our prayer and he will move on your part. Here's one from Carolyn. Uh, please pray for Daniel, who is very ill. 
he has great needs in his life. Uh, James is believing for favor, and he also says that I'll never be homeless again. Amen. Here's one from David. Our daughter needs uh, uh, custody of her kids. Uh, we're believing and asking God for divine favor. Melvin, please pray for my wife. Uh, she has need of a left knee replacement, and uh, we're also believing for debt cancellation. Mm -hmm. Carly, uh, she's believing for a home. And Dan, kindly pray for my family to have peace and for a financial breakthrough. So Amen. if you heard your name called out, Amen. we're going to call your name out once again to the Lord, and we're going to believe God for the miracle that you're believing for in your life right now. So join your faith Amen. with ours. Well, Father God, we just thank you for thank your you, goodness Lord. and your faithfulness, Lord. And we release our faith over these individuals right now. We yes, thank Father. you that you are the God of the breakthrough. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. As Jesus healed in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, I thank you that he's healing today. I thank you as the you, word Father. was sent, it healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. I thank you for the grace of God, the peace of God. I thank you for, for finances coming into their lives. I thank you for directing them. I thank yes, you, Lord, Father. the blessing of the Lord is making them rich and adding no sorrow to it. I thank you their increase on the right hand and on the left hand. I thank you, Lord, that you are doing marvelous things, wonderful things. Yes, Father. Thank you, Father, for the You're God of the breakthrough God. visiting their houses. Thank you, Father, for your provisions. Thank you for wisdom. Those that need wisdom, we come in agreement that they have wisdom to make the decisions yes, that ne they need to make. Holy Spirit, direct them, guide them. Those that need comfort, I thank you for the comfort of the Holy Spirit to thank surround you, them right now. We thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And James, I believe in the name yes. of Jesus, you will never be homeless again. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Our time is about up, but don't forget our special offer this week, Keys to a Flourishing Lifestyle. Six CDs, powerful, anointed. I'm telling you, this was a meeting that you should have been in, but most of you weren't that are watching this broadcast right now. But we recorded the messages and they're available to you. And even though you weren't in the meeting, you can hear the messages and the same anointing that was in that meeting is right here on these messages. Amen. And I'm telling you, it'll fill your house and cause burdens to be removed and yokes to be destroyed. Amen. Keys to a flourishing lifestyle. Six CDs, order them today. All the ordering information is on your screen right now. And don't forget, just now be back next week, continuing in this study on keys to a flourishing lifestyle. Amen. Make your plans to be with us. Please uh, join with us uh, on all of the uh, social media. Uh, we have uh, things that are available to you so that you can stay connected. We want to stay connected to you. Thank you, partners, for believing in us. Thank you for your financial support. And we'll see you again next week. Until then, remember, your faith will overcome the world.